Hello, everyone, and welcome to KenCast. It's great to see you today. Thanks for joining us for our very special discussion about the new Karate Kid movie and also Cobra Kai leaks and really anything you want to talk about, news, how you're doing at this point in 2024. Uh, it is great to be here, whether you're watching on YouTube or X or Facebook. Uh, be sure to give us a comment. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what your live thoughts are and who knows, you might spark a whole new discussion. Today, to talk about all this news, I have someone who is very unique in the entire Miyagi-verse. Someone who is not only an expert on these Karate Kid movies, on the Cobra Kai series, he's pretty much talked to every person associated with the making of this franchise ever. And he has unique insights and wisdom on everything and so much to draw upon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the Companion Network, I'm very pleased to introduce Peter Bonasek. Peter, how are you today? I'm doing good. Ken, I was waiting for the reveal. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great. It's great to have you here. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, we know you're a huge fan of all things Miyagi-verse and beyond. Um, could you give people a an introduction to your work and what you do and what your passions are the um uh also but you know thank you for having me on uh kencast 84 that's a cool number it is it yeah. is right wow i didn't even think of that that right to this yeah. moment I, wow. I thought it was intentional you should just take it uh yeah <laughs> the, the, uh, right yeah I, I meant to do that exactly 1984 you know so it's uh, the 40th anniversary this year really excited about that just what three three and a half months away so but um yeah i started off as cobra kai companion you know covering um all things uh cobra kai really uh, you mentioned it with just about everybody involved with the show um visited the set you know uh, as well a few years back got to work paley fest and at some point you know these people they've given me um you know a lot of their time they're very generous and uh, they continue to give me their time uh, to, and, and give me these interviews and um, anything. I don't want to say everything, but th there's things that I am interested in when uh, people announce that, uh, you know, they're attached to another project. And sometimes I'll uh, cover those shows or you know, in, in some way, whether it's a podcast or, or in print. Um, School Spirits, you know, which uh, stars uh, Peyton List. We have uh, Sarah from the UK. She writes the uh, her episode reviews and that goes on the website uh so that's you know a companion adjacent but that it is it is on the website uh and then michael jonathan smith who's been a big part ever since season one he uh show runs twisted metal on peacock and so i started my coverage with twisted metal companion and then a short-lived but not over yet obliterated companion um you know created by john josh and hayden from uh, the cobra, uh, cobra kai and sadly, it was announced that they uh, were not picked up for a season two. But the, the, the cast, the crew, just been so generous, uh, been able to interview just about the entire cast of that show. And we're still going to do our episode reviews uh, at the very least uh, before kind of putting it on a, a, a indefinite hold. That's great. And, you know, of course, everyone here is probably very familiar with Cobra Kai. If you haven't seen Obliterated, we've done watch parties on this channel. Uh, Peter has done amazing coverage. He, he, Peter, you have gotten just such insane interviews, amazing, amazing interviews with everyone associated with that show. And um, it's just I think if people listen to your interviews, they just get a new sense of the level of creativity and genius that go into these shows. And so I recommend everyone uh, checking out Companion Network. Here's the uh, YouTube page. Uh, there's also a link in the description. Go over there, subscribe, and you've basically got hours and hours and hours of amazing content you can listen to at any time if you're curious about how these projects come about and uh, if you want your questions answered because I guarantee you that Peter, being an ultimate fan, if if you've had a question, Peter has asked it. So, uh, so check out all the interviews. And um, so, Peter, speaking of fandom, okay, we're going to be talking about a few things today. We're going to be talking about the new Karate Kid movie that'll be coming out later this year. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, but you know, we're going to be talking about the subject of leaked photos. We've had like a number of leaked photos, uh, even just this past week. 
And so, you know, I, uh, I thought that we might, uh, pull up, uh, you know, maybe some leaked, leaked photos, you know, to, uh, to, to take a look. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's a, such a great idea. Um, Oh, well, I, I think I think uh, I, I think we just have to do it. You know, the fans are demanding it. They're demanding all news on Cobra Kai. They know where six. they can go. If they want to see such things. I don't think your channel's it. You shouldn't do it, Ken. You know, you you also get some access to to things Cobra Kai related, and you don't want to yes. break that trust by sharing leaks or you know spoilers. I know, Peter, but this is just too good. I have to, I have to share this. I have to share this. Okay. Your channel. Just, and if you, if you guys want to close your eyes, you can, okay. but I have to share okay. this. All right, guys, you have right. to look at this new photo from Cobra Kai season six. <laughs> what is this? Peter? Yes. Yes, Peter. It's very you insightful stuff. This. Yeah. There Somewhere he is. in the shadows. Wow. Here There's we go. The There's the boogeyman. You know what I love about this, Peter? Okay. Not only does it feature Terry Silver, uh, not only is he scary in the shadows, but you've got him in his uh, kind of like Emperor Palpatine look, you know, like uh, yeah. making that connection with Star Wars. And uh, I love that. So, Peter, Peter, tell us about this. How, how did you how did you come up with this? Um, so I've been kind of doing a lot of uh, edits on, on social media. It's It's been mostly julie pierce related and i just mm. that's that's something that i'm not like clamoring for but i think it makes sense and i think a lot of people would love to kind of see daniel interact with another student of mr miyagi's you know little or or a lot we didn't know we were going to get chosen for like most of season five we don't necessarily need julie pierce for all you know of season six we could just get a little bit of her like we did uh you know ally in season three um, it doesn't need to be a big role, but it's just it'd be something nice. And it's, it's the final season. Um, this mm -hmm. idea was, you know, I I, I think there's still a um, number of people out there that do not believe that Terry Silver is returning. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking if you guys have any sort of pulse on the creator, John Josh, Hayden, they are big fans of that character and that yeah. actor. And there's no way they're going to have you know, pull Thomas Ian Griffith out of retirement to reprise his role just for a big L at the end of season five. And so I feel they just have something huge uh, for him. And um, that's why you're not seeing him because they're trying to keep it probably close to the chest. And so I just thought I'd share something kind of fun for the Terry Silver fans. Like, look, your guy is out there just hiding in the shadows, just waiting for his moment. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And you're, you're right. I mean, every day I, you know, I know so many Terry Silver fans online. I'm a huge Terry Silver fan, of course, and everyone is freaking out that they won't see Terry again. And images like this give us hope. And yeah. you know, I think your analysis is correct. Oh, look at that. Wait, hang on. Terry yep. Silver hoodie. Go, go to the official Cobra Kai store and maybe show your support that you guys want the, the Terry Silver, but, um, I don't think anyone has any should be concerned uh, about you know whether he's returning or not. Yeah, I I feel that way too. It's just there's no way that they could leave it like that. Uh, just everything we know of Terry, uh, there's more to his story. So um, and and Hayden did say, yeah, you know, I will say this. He he did say that he's very focused on Terry Silver not going out into oblivion. So I remember that. Take take that take that for what you will. But Maybe you Peter, thank you. Share that clip. Just yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I, I. You know what? That's that's. I should I should get that clip out, and we should share that. So, um, but I think you're right. We don't know how. We don't know how he's going to come back. We don't know what the story is. We don't know when he's going to come back. Um, and I think it's fun to speculate, you know, obviously for the fans, but uh, yeah. And how much, Ken, how much more fun would it be to see that unravel and, you know, have the, you know, the, the great mastermind that is Terry Silver. If you, if you peg how he returns or what capacity he's in, in season six, Hey, how is that fun? Like, you know, in the viewing experience in, you know, season six is going to be an event from everything that they're telling us, right? Like, mm -hmm. It's not just like the final season. This is going to be an entire event. Uh, it's going to go global. The Sekai Tekai is a world tournament. And so right. 
it, yeah, it, it, they, we can, there's so little that's out there. I, I'd be surprised if people were able to kind of like figure out what the plot's going to be in season six, other than just like these little beats that we feel they're going to hit. Right, right. Yeah, you're right. And the speculation, that's so much fun to do. And I think there, you're right. There's so much to speculate about. There's so many theories that, that we can advance. And uh, part of the fun is seeing how the writers, you know, what everyone comes up with. And they usually come up with just absolutely brilliant things. So I can't wait. Now, Peter, uh, I obviously that was a joke when I said I was sharing a leaked photo. You know, I it wasn't right. It was it was it was a great image by you. However, I do have an actual real leaked photo from the set of Cobra Kai. And uh, it's really good. And I have to share it right now. OK, it's probably really great so, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's OK, though. I, I think we'll be able to make out what this is. OK, this guys, this is from the set of Cobra Kai sharing this is exclusively on KenCast right now. Uh, so here it is. Peter, <laughs> this leaked photo, Peter, from the set of Cobra Kai. It's you. Is, is it a leak if it's, uh, uh, you know, three and a half years late? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, no, it is. I guess it's not a spoiling leak, but look, it's you. You are here. This is a very famous wall. Can you tell us about the story of this photo? Absolutely. Um, so 2019, I was in, in Atlanta for the Dragon Con and was invited to visit the set. And we went and this photo, uh, you know, we explored the the Cobra Kai dojo as you do and got all the pictures you know you're punching dummy bob i got a picture with him uh which he would eventually be shown in uh johnny's dream sequence in i think season four but uh i asked hayden if i could take a picture in front of this wall and he would not let me take it with my phone he took it with his phone it mm -hmm. says that i could have it when uh, after season three releases um, this is a, a spoiler. This is a plot point in season two or three rather. And um, we we know how season two ended and people can say, well, like, well, yeah, we expected Kreese to kind of take over. And but, you know, this is that that happens. So it's a minor spoiler, but it's still a spoiler nonetheless. Yeah, it's. It the main question I have, though, is what was it like to be there? Like, obviously, you're a fan. You're covering the series since basically its inception. And you got a chance to go on set to stand. What's it, what's that experience like? It um, is funny because it, this might sound kind of wrong, but it uh, it almost felt I, so in that particular dojo, it almost felt a little small having like been there myself like you're watching the show and it's, it's this big thing and you know you you grow up and you watch like behind the scene uh supplemental material on your you know the back of physical copies and you see how like the magic is made but like being on set it was something different because now you're seeing there's actually no ceiling it takes a little bit mm -hmm. of the magic away uh in, in a sense yeah, so it's kind of hard to explain, but it was also like being on a uh, tour at Universal that, you know, that nobody else gets to go see. Like everybody else is on, mm -hmm. you know, the trolley and, and kind of doing that that visit. But like to kind of veer off and go into, you know, doors that are closed and opening it and like you're the only one. It was very surreal. Um, and also like some things where you just want to look at like like it's a, like in a museum but like a kid in a candy store you just want to touch everything and i just remember mm -hmm. you know turning certain knobs and things won't uh, work like a light switch actually does not work because it's lit up by the the light mm -hmm. on stages uh, uh in the ceiling so if those aren't on then you're on a set that's that's dark and so so that's kind of the fun part of exploring trying to see what's there um you know, I have pictures of uh, inside Johnny's apartment and we took a look at like his CD collection and they are actually <laughs> music that Johnny would listen to. Poison was an actual CD that he owned or uh, a band. So they they do a really great job addressing it. So it still feels real. But just like looking you know, straight up at the ceiling, seeing that there's nothing there 
or you know a toilet that won't flush those are, are kind of kind of funny because you just kind of right. wonder what's going to be real what's not so it's it's a severe experience is, is how i can explain it that's so awesome that's so great and um so i i don't know so have you have you let me put it this way have you ever been back to the set of cobra kai If you you don't have to answer, well, okay. we can leave it a mystery. Yeah, let's do that. I was just that. wondering if you. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's okay. let's leave it. Okay. Well, we'll we'll get back to you in the future on that. We'll get back to you in the okay. future on that. Um. Okay. So, um, guys, how amazing! Uh, we got to see those photos. Let's talk about the leaked photo thing, because guys, uh, there have been a lot of leaked photos this past week, and. I want to get Peter's thoughts on this. I just want to let you know, as always, I, this channel is not about leaking information. It's not about behind the scenes information. If we're going to cover something, it's going to be, especially with the Cobra Kai series, it's going to be directly from the cast and crew or from Netflix. It's th They've been releasing tons of material for us to analyze anyway. Um, but, you know, we are not about spoiling you on the Cobra Kai series on this channel. And, uh, Peter, what, what are your thoughts on that as far as like being fans, um, uh, sharing leaked photos? What, what's your philosophy on, on leaked information? It, it, did, it definitely takes away uh, from the viewing experience. Um, one of the there's been a few spoilers that can come to mind. And, and one of which was um, kind of on my own. I spoiled myself uh, and that's that's when i got the screeners for uh, season four and it was the very first time i had been approved for any sort of screeners and so mm -hmm. you get this email you get a bunch of information um this is when you can release a non-spoiler review this is when you can release a spoiler review uh and if you write a non-spoiler review or do a video these are the bullet points that we would you you know would like for you to not to mention because of the plot point and they they even changed the font color but it's i think it was like a very light gray you know and my eyes just kind of wandered over and the first one of the first ones that i saw was um you know basically please do not reveal the return of chosen in the season four finale you know and so immediately right. I, I'm like, that's huge because now I'm going to watch all of season four wondering where's that inkling that we might get a chosen. And so obviously when season four ends, I'm like, okay, well, this isn't it because I chosen somewhere. And so you see Daniel, uh, you know, at the cemetery and it's just kind of like, you're still trying to figure it out. So it kind of so for the very first time. And mm -hmm. I had a very unique experience and can you were a part of this as well at Paley Fest. We got to experience that with like hundreds of other fans in the Dolby theater and, and, and just, you know, thinking about it is, is sending chills up my spine. And, and so I got to get something kind of, uh, you know, in lieu of that, but that's, that was big. That, that, that's a huge surprise. And that's why I missed out on that. And one of the big ones when the show moved to Netflix was, you know, the picture of, uh, of Billy, you know, William Zapka and uh, Sholo in their Eagle Fangies. Uh, and so yeah. now you know that Johnny and Daniel at some point, you know, they they don't they, they don't work together. Right. Because now they have the two different geese. And so so that was a big one. You know, like to each their own, if they want to share it, that's fine. These pictures uh, that we're talking about and some footage that have been coming out, I didn't seek out any of them. Right. I saw all of them because of many, uh, a lot of the people that I that I follow on social media. And I, I know what I'm getting myself into when I go on and log mm -hmm. on. I have a gal pal, you know, who says that she may kind of stay off Twitter until the show comes out because of these very reasons. There's people out there that do they want to go in blind and that's fine. And, you know, I just want to try to prevent people that wish to not be spoiled. So I'm not out there trying to do like everything that I can. I can only try to be an example, set an example. And many, you know, don't care to follow. And that's that's fine. But as a, as a content creator, and with like you said, the access that I have gotten with uh, you know many sh different shows, I don't want to mm -hmm. break that trust, and I want to continue getting these interviews and, and these access. Um, and so I think I can do my part by 
not going out and sharing and making videos too. But, you know, I'm not going to poo poo on the people that do it. It's just, you know, different but same. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it, it's kind of a weird thing. I guess we all have to, you know, draw the line somewhere. But I think that's a really balanced perspective on the entire thing. And so, so guys, uh, feel free if you want to look up this stuff. That's totally cool. But um, yeah, at least on this channel, we won't talk about or share that information, I should say. Um, hopefully that's not too disappointing, but uh, we don't want to spoil. We, we want to have fun speculating. If we had spoilers about, say, Terry Silver, like we were talking about, would that be any fun? No, because we wouldn't get to speculate. And uh, I think that's part of the fun of waiting for season six. Yeah, it. there's so many people that work on the show. And so some of the cast, they may actually share something that they don't think is spoiler or you know, mention something about production that maybe they shouldn't, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, keep everybody accountable and keep track of, you know, what can be shared and what cannot be shared. So, you know, we can't get it all, but, um, you know, I, I don't think many of my followers are following me for spoilers because, you know, if you've mm -hmm. been following me long enough, you know, that I don't share that. And, you know, I'll let you right. know there's, there are things out there. So that way people can, you know, kind of take the right precautions and make sure that they don't spoil themselves. Um, I understand that where they are is a, a public place and, you know, there's there's plenty of people and you, you can't close off a lot of different places. You're going to have a lot of vantage points in other people's personal, you know, homes or whatever. And so, yeah, you just you can't avoid avoid them I and mean, you can do the best you can. Um, that, that's really it. So I, I just I know there's a lot of people kind of fighting out there between, you know, like what they think is, you know, really considered and, and the parameters, you know, I think all that aside, it's really like, you know, if, if you don't care about, you know, uh, other people's, uh, you know, wanting, wanting to go into a new season blind, that's, that's just how you are. And, and there are other people that are mindful and that just won't share it. That's it. Right. Right. Well, guys, um, you know, be careful out there if you don't want to get spoiled. Uh, but uh, you're safe here. You're safe with us and the Companion Network. So uh, at least for three us. years. At least for three yes. years. Photos of me. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So we. So you, what you're saying is we might get some more photos in another three years, or even like say next year from two years ago, maybe. I, I think those. That's a pretty good guess. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. All right, guys. Well, let's take some of your comments. We've got Talking Star Wars. I love this casting, talking about the new Karate Kid movie. And it's funny that Sadie was in something called Cruel Summer. Yes, well, we will get back to that. Um, K-Tom says, I just don't understand why Jackie Chan was playing in a movie named The Karate Kid in 2010, 2013, since they were clearly doing Kung Fu. And that's, you know, Peter... The thing is, I'm very curious to get your thoughts on this whole movie. I can't wait to get into it. Um, just your philosophical perspective on this new movie, uh, how it came about, everything like that. And I think some of these questions are getting towards that. Uh, let's, uh, Jasmine, good to see you. Hey, Ken, saying hello. And Peter, how are you doing? Uh, hope you had a good week. When can you do a live stream about Stranger Things? You know, we've really never talked about Stranger Things on this channel. Love the show. I'm a huge fan. Um, I will say, if you're looking for some quick Stranger Things content, I think our friend Watch Party uh, has done some Stranger Things videos. So you might go over there if you're looking for stuff uh, in the short term and the long term. You know, who knows? Maybe we'll do some, some discussion about Stranger Things. I've, uh, how, how far I've do, have you seen. gone? Wait, uh, how, which season? Uh, season one. That's the only season okay. I've seen. That's because after that, Cobra Kai came out. <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, now, a lot of people will say that season one, even though the series is good, season one is the best. Um, did you enjoy season one? I did. I did. It, it wasn't what people, because as as friends do, you know, podcast friends, you know, real life friends, they, they feel like they know you. And so they say, this show um and i think somebody even gave me some examples of other shows like well if you like these type of shows you'll like this mm -hmm. and those shows were very um you know what one of them was like twin peaks and i don't know if that's more tonally but i love twin peaks and so as i was expecting a lot of twists and yeah. there wasn't a lot of that i'm like wait so where's the twin peaks aspect so they didn't really tell me exactly what to kind of expect 
examples of other shows if you like this you might like this and so i really enjoyed it but i was like well wh where's the big twist and reveals and I, I didn't get that and so i i hear some of those come a little bit later in in other uh, seasons but when cobra kai dropped just uh i hit the ground running with that and then just you know and here we are kind of thing yeah yeah well you know, I don't. At this point, you, what you might want to do is uh, wait until season five is about to release, hmm. and then go and watch the others. You know, uh, I did the same thing with Dune. You know, the movies. I I didn't see part one, and I just waited till the second one came out, and then then watched them together. So, um, on that note, the uh, the second Spider Verse movie. Can you help me with the title? Do you know? Uh, Across the Spider Verse. Okay. It sounds right. I'm sure the the, the great um, you know people in the chat will you know can correct yeah, us if correct. we're, we're yes. wrong. I had no idea that there was there was already like a third movie you know in mind, greenlit or whatever. You know, I've right. definitely been just kind of like laser focused on either Cobra Kai or the things that I'm covering, and right. um, and things that I just want to check my head out at you know in the, at, late at night. And so I went to go watch that in the movie theater. Loved it, and the way mo the movie was planned. 40 minutes left i'm like there's no way this movie's gonna end in 40 minutes and when mm -hmm. it did i go what it, i had no idea it was a cliffhanger and it was gonna lead in straight into a third film so if you have not seen that one yet i would strongly advise like waiting until that their movie is about to come out because okay you i i hate that i have to wait now it's 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 probably just as bad as the wait between seasons two and three of cobra kai wow yeah. and that was pretty bad yeah <laughs> yeah so, that's, that's pretty bad uh wow okay well i haven't seen that one yet so i'm gonna take your advice i am not gonna watch it until that the next movie comes out so so thank you thank you very much um matt moore thanks for being a channel member matt howdy ken hey you should host a 35 35th anniversary special chat on karate kid 3 on june 30th well that sounds like a great idea matt i think yeah. that's a great idea my goodness work for you <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Isn't that great? Uh, I, I think you're, we, we've got a lot of great uh, anniversaries this year. So as, as Peter yeah. pointed out, this is also KenCast84, as Peter pointed out. So 84 is a big year. It's uh, 40. I can't think, Peter. It's been a lot 40 of great years. Movies. A lot of great movies. Yeah, a lot, 40 a lot of great movies. Um, we might have to, you know, we'll talk off mic, but it sounds like me, you, uh, Rohali, and, you know, others to be determined should do a big 1984 stream or collaboration just to talk about the movies from i love that idea too guys yeah. this this is this is amazing you're watching the genesis of some fun ideas for this year i think you're 100 percent right we need to do that we need to celebrate 1984 it was an incredible year worthy of celebrating um let's see we've got owen ellis says i can't wait till cobra kai season six and uh will terry silver be back in cobra kai season six I, I would say yes. I would say yes. And I, I, I'm interested to follow up on your thoughts on Julie Pierce a little later. Um, uh, we've got this comment from Jay Quinto, 75. I understand not wanting to announce Hillary Swank right now, but I would like to see some announcements of new cast members, especially relating to new Cobra Kai students. So, Peter, this is different. We're about to talk about the movie, but this is sort of uh, a continuing TV show. So do you feel like announcing cast members for a new season is spoilerish or could be spoilerish? Or is there a reason why they might not want to announce these new cast members now? I, could, um, I couldn't think of a reason for why they wouldn't want to announce them now other than holding back some, um, some details. But... But I think even regular cast announcements wouldn't even necessarily if they're like an antagonist or protagonist. So it, it would just be speculative too. But I do also want who are the ones that decide, you know, to make these announcements. Um, I have once asked uh, someone a few years back, the understanding was it's, you know, it's that, that, that talent's reps, you know, whether it's management agent, you mm -hmm. know, and, but but I do, but I'm still I don't know how something like a variety or Deadspin, how do they kind of you know does somebody reach out and say like hey these are like three people that we want you to announce, I have no idea. But um, since they're in production right now and we you know as far as we know we haven't really seen anything with 
spaces. Uh, maybe um, now is just not a, you know, a moment that's necessary to share. And maybe we're also a little too far out from anything else that they're going to be putting out. Um, but, but I did feel for a while there, they were going to try to do, um, when I say they, I, I mean like the Cobra Kai social media accounts releasing just like little things here and there but now it seems like that's kind of gone cold a little bit as well so mm -hmm. and, and and maybe these little you know leaks it's like they're cool with it because there is nothing out right now and this really doesn't give anything world tournament you know like are they we, we have no idea what the purpose is in where they're currently uh filming at so yeah right. Right. Not, not a lot so i can understand them not being too I would, I'm assuming that they're not too upset about this particular one. They're out in the open. You know, it has, right. you know, the, one of the most, you know, noticeable, like, like, uh, uh, I don't know, wardrobe in cinema history, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, and another thing too, is I, I could be wrong in my sense of this, but with this season of Cobra Kai season six, because there's been such a delay, uh, I think, this is the first time that they're actively sharing things from set, like from the beginning of shooting the season. Uh, in the past, when we first started hearing about the season, it was almost always after the season was shot. You know, they would start coming out with like promo materials. But this being different, we're starting to get promos like that one, like, hey, we started shooting and like showing things, you know, I think to get people's awareness back about Cobra Kai that it's coming. Um, so maybe that's what's contributing to people's frustrations. This part of the process would kind of be happening behind closed doors and we would only hear about it really later. Uh, but now it's in the open and people are kind of following the actual production and trying to figure out what's happening in real time, um, which I think is new. Right. Right. You know, and, you know, the, and with the, the Karate Kid movie also being filmed um, simultaneously, you know, with season six of Cobra Kai, it's, it keeps the fans like interested. Right. And um, I know people are kind of concerned with like the production and the turnaround and especially with, you know, Hayden having, Hayden having put out there that they would love to get us season six, like as soon as possible. So even mm -hmm. during like the writer's strike and then sag after you know, there, there are plenty of other people that are still kind of working behind the scenes and, you know, there people will kind of forget they are, um, and they still do it, but we have shows that release new episodes every single week. So the people behind the scenes, there, editors and, and, you know, everybody that works in post, they, this, you know, this is not new to them. And so if they are kind of, um, I don't want to use the word pressure, but if, if they are, you know, if they have a target deadline and want to get it to us this year, it's not impossible. They can run episodes, you know, now they, they could be editing episode one. Now, you know, they could be hiring more editors. Like if the season is going to be bigger, better, bolder, like all the words that they were using, I would imagine the team is getting bigger, you know, even in mm. post. So I, I'm not concerned about, you know, it being rushed or anything like that. I, I think, you know, at this point, we're trusting John, Josh and Hayden and, you know, what they're what they're going to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was having a conversation. I was having a conversation with uh, Drew from Drew Tube Cobra Kai Kid, and he had this strong sense that John, Josh and Hayden will want to get season six out before the release of this new movie, new Karate Kid movie, uh, December 13th. So that's towards the end of the year. Do you have a sense or do you have a gut feeling about when the uh, season might release? Uh, you know, if it's going to be coordinated with this new movie or not, uh, or do you think Netflix is just going to do its own thing? Uh, the latter, uh, just because, you know, a lot of people over these last seasons have been kind of, you know, guesstimating when the new season would, would uh, drop. And none of those dates have correlated with anything from the Cobra Kai or the Karate Kid world. And mm -hmm. Netflix is going to release it based off of what other projects they have out uh, at the time. And they don't want to compete with themselves. And, you know, right. both Cobra Kai and the Karate Kid film, both being Sony properties, um, I think have 
of say of when well they, they already put out the movie's release but i think that's probably also um kind of a a, a mindful uh decision in placing it like late in the year mm-hmm. I, i'm sure you know people involved with the cobra kai whether it's the suits or the filmmakers they're like well no that's plenty of time you know we'll be able to get cobra kai season six so i i think when it comes to um what they're targeting in terms of release to do with like the other project one one or the other um yeah i think uh, it, it comes like um uh, above their pay grade really i gotcha well peter let's take that opportunity to segue to this this other project which um you know we've talked a little bit about uh you know on this channel but this is the new karate kid movie that's going to be coming out uh december 13th 2024 <laughs> Uh, I think this movie caught everyone by surprise. Uh, th- we knew that something was coming, but we were very shocked when we saw that both Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan were going to be in it. And they were doing this video that was talking about this global search for the new Karate Kid. Uh, since then, it's been cast. Ben Wang is playing Lee, as uh, as has been released in the casting uh, materials and the leaks. I don't know if they'll he'll, that'll still be his name, but we have Lee. Then we have um, obviously Jackie Chan. Then we got announced uh, Joshua Jackson, uh, and we, we talked a little bit about that last week with uh, Drew and Badway. Joshua Jackson's been cast for an undisclosed role. We've since learned he'll be the father of uh, Sadie Stanley, who was announced this past week, who will be the love interest for uh, Ben Wang. And then we heard that Ming-Na Wen has been cast in an undisclosed role. And the first thing that's hitting me right now is that this movie, like they are definitely putting together a very talented group of people like um, in this movie. And I think a lot of people watching this, some people are excited for it. Some people are absolutely not excited for this. Um, how do you sift through this, and what are your feelings about this movie, Peter? Uh, well, w- when the movie was kind of announced, and they said that Jackie Chan and um, Ralph Macho were going to be reprising the roles, I'm like, well, that'll be interesting. And um, I think what I'm more interested about is how are they going to make that work. Um, I wasn't, you know, saying, oh, Jackie Chan is all involved with this other movie. Well, no, I'm not watching it. Or wait isn't Daniel Russo in Cobra Cry and this is weird. I'm not watching it. So I'm going to give it a chance. You know, there's going to be people involved with the show that are going to work hard uh, as evident by the casting. You know, they, they're, they're, they're getting some big names here and I'm actually even more excited. Um, I never said I wasn't going to watch it. I, I will definitely give it a shot. Um, I love the Karate Kid story. You know, we, we have grown up with other movies that are very similar to the Karate Kid, uh, the Karate Kid itself like a like a teenage rocky you know people have made that Mm -hmm. comparison obviously because of john g albertson um it's a it's a timeless story and it's just uh you know the characters are you gonna love them uh well we we already have two actors in here that i think uh, many fans you know who who enjoy these actors are are just gonna be on board just for them uh, alone um i think one of my biggest issues with the 2010 the karate kid which I really quite enjoyed. I thought, it, you know, a lot of people um, acted um, well. It was beautifully uh, shot. It was a beautiful mm-hmm. location. Um, mm-hmm. Again, it's, just, it's the same story and all the same beats, basically. My issue was your 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 lead was 12, 13 years old and a romantic relationship that I could not get behind. You know, at, at least, right. you know, and I wasn't watching The Credit Kid in 1984, but when I did watch it, Ali and Daniel were much older than me. And so that, you know, thing that was a, a, a glaring issue, you know, during my, my viewing of it. Uh, these characters uh, look older, obviously. And uh, so if there's anything romantic, I'm like, okay, well, at least they're not in middle school, you know, or, or, or something. <laughs> right. uh, but a lot, a lot of the cast members, I mean, Joshua Jackson, uh, I, I did not listen to to last week's episode yet uh, i just revealed to you which one i did listen to uh, uh the other day <laughs> right but yes, yes. you know i grew up on the mighty ducks uh movies uh mm-hmm. i love part three which is also one i feel that gets uh, kind of overlooked uh but 
yeah, Joshua Jackson was in Skulls. You know, he he actively did stuff. You know, Fringe. If you were more of a TV watcher, he's continually doing things and hasn't like fallen off. And uh, I think a lot of people would love to see his return to you know the big screen. Uh, so I'm excited by that casting. Mean Ming Na Wen, uh, Mulan. You know, and she, she's still working as well. She's been mm-hmm. working since you know the mid to late '80s. Uh, Joy Luck Club with Tamlin Tamita. Um, you know the, the Star Wars Mandalorian, stuff, uh, yeah. So so much. Uh, Street Fighter, nineteen ninety four. Like I was the yeah. right age. You know she played Chun Li, <laughs> and so uh, I couldn't be happier. She was just in Portland, and I wish that I gave her a moment. You know, all my time went to Ralph. Uh, that was a tough one. You know, which beautiful person yeah. do I want to? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and you know, and it was still during the strike, so obviously I chose Ralph. But I would have loved to meet uh, Ming Na Wen as well. So I'm really excited about that. That casting on top of Ralph and Jackie, uh, Ben, uh, is it Wang or Wang? Ben I, Wang. I think it was Wang. I think. Okay. I think it is. Yeah. So I saw uh, Chang Can't Dunk, and I think he was the the best friend to the lead, and the the best friend role was the one that got my attention. You know, it mm-hmm. he he reminded me of uh, if you guys want any sort of like comic book reference he kind of reminded me of a peter parker because his friend was a filmmaker so 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 ben wang was like you know this high school kid who who loved to film for social media and stuff and mm-hmm. you know his mind was always working and, and creating content so i kind of uh i kind of I, I was like I, I i like me some ben i was identifying with that character and um so that's uh, so that's something that um i did see i did not see american born chinese which recently i saw was getting a lot of love. Uh, was it the Critics' Choice? I, I believe I, I shared something, and it was basically like, if you guys want to get uh, familiarized with, you know, the new lead here, here's something that he's a part of that's garnering a lot of attention, and um, you know, yeah, just positive reviews. So I definitely want to check it out when I can squeeze in some time for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. You know, it's interesting as far as like his casting. Uh, I, th- this whole thing, when it first came out with Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan, it really reminded me of what they did for Karate Kid 3. You know, when they were casting for Mike Barnes, they did this big, you know, it was like a publicity stunt. Hey, we're an- anyone off the street, come on in and audition for this character in Karate Kid 3. And, you know, it was supposed to be a publicity stunt, you know, to raise the profile of the movie. However, they did get uh, both um, uh, Sean Kanan and William Christopher Ford into the movie from that open casting call. Uh, so it turned out to be fruitful. This reminded me of that, like where they announced this and it was basically just a publicity stunt. And I know people were submitting from all over the world, over 10,000 submissions, but you know, obviously they went with a, a veteran actor. And so, you know, I think, I think it worked though. I mean, it certainly got us all to pay attention to this new movie coming out. Um, and who knows, maybe some of the people who submitted somehow will, will work their way into the movie. Um, but obviously we have this cast, but this, the concept of this. So do you, do you have what you're such a fan of Cobra Kai? And obviously we all love what John, Josh and Hayden have done with Cobra Kai. And it seems like, what Sony did was they had this script and I don't even know if it was originally for a karate kid movie or if it was for something else, but they changed it to be like a karate kid movie. And, you know, we've gone over many times on this channel. We could go over it again. If you want, like the, there was a story that was reported on before the movie was announced that's out there and, you know, it takes place in Brooklyn and, you know, those are the things we kind of know about it. Um, But it almost seems like the story was kind of foisted upon the Miyagi verse And a lot of fans are trying to reconcile, well, how does this fit? I mean, Robbie and Daniel talk about the actor Jackie Chan in season one. Uh, And yet Jackie Chan will be playing Mr. Han, who will be sharing scenes, presumably, with Daniel. So it's like it seems like universe busting in a way. Um, How how do you reconcile this uh, as a fan? It's it's, it's tough because so little is known. Obviously, there are really keeping the details um, close to the chest i I, i'm hoping it's something where yeah it's these actors playing themselves but it's um you know something more fictional like a last action hero or 
you know, maybe something like a sidekicks where, um, the, you know, the character that Ben plays, you know, he, he watches these movies and these characters kind of come to life to him and, and, you know, kind of inspire him to take on the, if, if I remember correctly, that he's going to be the mentor to like an adult, right? So if that's that, that's, yeah, that's, that's the idea. If, if, right. if you want to go into, we, we can, you know, why don't we just pull this up? Cause this is yeah. really old news that we covered in 2022, but they had basically a, um, they're great, great reporting. This is an early version guys of the script. Um, okay. Lee, we know this. He's tough, smart, and scrappy. He's said to be a skilled fighter and a student in Beijing who finds his life uprooted after his mother moves them to Brooklyn. Lee is said to be struggling with a past tragedy, which drives a wedge between him and his doctor mom, who's managed to handle the same tragedy in her own way. Or we could probably guess what the tragedy is. After Lee meets Mia, a student from his high school, and her father, Victor, at a local pizza restaurant, He'll soon find his life has changed yet again for the better. Lee soon finds himself training Victor in the art of Kung Fu right there, despite his mother's stance against violence and fighting and ultimately back in the ring her, uh, himself. So that's kind of, that was a, an older draft of what the story is. Does not involve Mr. Han or Daniel Russo. So, you know, obviously it's been rewritten, but, but yes, there's that kind of reverse mentoring um, where Lee might be mentoring victor so we're assuming ben wang mentoring joshua jackson that's interesting i mean i know that you mentioned that's something old and uh, a lot could have changed but it almost kind of tells me that um you know the doctor mom she's uh maybe spending too much time trying to save lives because possibly the dad passed away uh right. and something that could have been prevented so so uh so lee still kind of lacks like a father figure so see, like all, all the, the the DNA of like a Karate Kid story is still there. Um, right. I know one of you know the members had mentioned previously about, about like you know what you know they were doing kung fu. I, I I believe like the working title was the Kung Fu Dream or the Kung Fu Kid. You know like, something like mm. that. And they ultimately still you know they, they uh, Will Smith had the rights and uh, they just changed it to the, to the Karate Kid because it's more it's more known. Um, but by doing that, like there was you know a little bit of baggage and so i i think um kind of deciding to go with the name of the karate kid kind of gave a lot of people the idea like i'm not this movie doesn't even stand a chance now for me right and so um i don't know if this like is a correction of that it's like okay we're gonna call it the karate kid and it is still gonna be karate you know and so right. at least that part <laughs> uh, I, I would hope nobody's uh, upset about but yeah with the name there's still gonna be some baggage and there's gonna be a lot of criticism so uh, I I feel what they have here is strong and I am excited for whenever they can release anything uh, about this new film right and that's you know Peter I think that's a great perspective it's like you know it's as far as we know it's about to start shooting it hasn't even been shot yet uh, we can get all up in arms about this. We don't know what script revisions were made. Uh, obviously, the idea of having both Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan in the movie together is, to me, it's exciting if they can bridge that. And it would be so much fun, I think, for me, if Mr. Han was somehow related to Mr. Miyagi's lineage or his fighting style. Uh, because... I mean, wouldn't that that would just make the universe so much bigger? Um, if they can make that work, then Jackie Chan could potentially be in future, you know, uh, installments. And I think he's just an amazing talent. Obviously, a super movie star, and he has a very serene quality to him um, that I think suits the franchise. And you would want to have him as a mentor. I, you know, he just has that quality that's you know, very accepting, non-judgmental, um, cares, you know, and so I, I hope they can do it. And, and you're right. We should probably let them, let them make the movie first. Right. Yeah. And, um, I just hope that it's not going to be like some sort of throwaway line that they're going to, you know, if that's what they, I'll humor you. And if that's something they decide that there is a connection to these worlds are obviously because we already have the two leads, uh, I hope it's not something that is just going to be touched upon in a scene or, you know, just a little bit of dialogue. I hope it's something that they can kind of sprinkle throughout 
you know, for us to kind of pick up on certain clues and details and to, you know, it, it's again, it's like the, 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 the you know, um, to take a line from, uh, I'm blanking on the name with uh, Steve Carell, the um, crazy, crazy love. You know, we're the one with him and Ryan, Ryan Gosling, who teaches him how to kind of pick up women. Oh, well, I, I haven't seen that one. I, I'm sure somebody will tell us in the chat, but there's a line right. where Steve Carell tells Ryan Gosling, it's like, you miyagi me, you know, like, like he conditioned <laughs> him to like how to pick up women and he just did it. And so like, there's a, a, a the reveal and it was earned. So if this is something that they're trying to connect and, and you know, want to give us that, you have to earn the reveal. Like I, I don't, I don't yeah. want like a throwaway line. I, I want this to feel authentic and uh, that it comes from a place of love, you know, fr from the writer who loves these properties. Yes. A crazy, stupid love. Great. There you go. Yep. I have to watch that. That's, that's, yeah. uh, be that's me. Cool. so it's, it's, it's just a fun <laughs> line because it, the entire time he's literally teaching him how to pick up women. And then he's like, oh, go ahead, go, go, go do it. And I was like, I don't know how to do it. And then, and then he, tests him he's like okay well if a woman does this what are you doing and he just like you know is able to answer so it's it's that thing a good reveal right so uh i on that note of things being related we know that john josh and hayden are not officially involved like it with this production we obviously know that they're giving notes they're, they're kind of like this unofficial hey we're here if you need us kind of thing but you know they're not the ones actually making it Although, you know, we do have, I'll pull up, uh, Sadie Stanley is playing uh, Joshua Jackson's daughter. And, you know, people are asking, like, okay, so is Joshua Jackson's character going to be like uh, Daniel LaRusso's cousin? And could uh, Sa Sadie Stanley be like Sam and Anthony's cousin? Um, like, do you think that they'll they'll actually choose to sort of like tie them in family wise to sort of Daniel's family. That's a hard question to answer um, because I know if we were asking Josh, Josh and Hayden, you know, it's the thing where nobody has to be related, you know, it's right. It, and it, Cause I know that was the, 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 the fixation with like Tori, you know, who is she related to nobody. Yeah. And so there was like a point uh, I, I feel in season three, for Chris to like call her nickels all the time, you know, just right. like, remember her, she is not Tori, you know, uh, uh, you know, Mills or whatever, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, I would actually prefer that they don't be related because I, we don't mm. need that. You're already bringing like two worlds together in a universe that weren't, wasn't supposed to be shared. And so I just, I don't want it to be that they were, yeah, everybody's related. Cause, uh, um, that, that's that's just 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 what I want. So I I would be um, kind of curious to kind of run a poll. You know, like what mm -hmm. would the fans want? You know, would they want them to be related? Or would they want them to just be like you know just a new family? That hey, some of our you know favorite characters just happen to be in this film, and let's just see how they put them together. So that's that's kind of where I would lay is the, the latter of that. I just I would prefer I that didn't even occur to me if they might be related uh, when this was right. announced. Yeah, just me right. kind of thinking again. If if uh, if Daniel and Mr. Han show up, and they did they say they're reprising the characters, right? So I I feel, you know, they're gonna be like a version of them, but not from their respective worlds. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. It's so difficult yeah. to say. Uh, but to kind of just touch on briefly uh, what you were talking about. Uh, John Josh and Hayden, you know, giving uh, uh, the new writer notes. It's kind of like them going to Cayman saying like, hey, we have these ideas. And right. Cayman has his own opinions and, and things. And they don't always do what he says or wants, whatever. If if anybody checked out my interview with uh, uh, Robert Mark Cayman to talk about the musical, we kind of, well, not we, he touched on, you know, kind of season five himself. And there were a lot of things I had to remove, including, you know, what his thoughts about the return of Mike Barnes was, you know, he was not for it. And, and mm -hmm. after seeing Sean um, in season five, he was like, okay, you know, that, that was, that was good. And so it's, it, you know, the, the new writer can be taking the notes, but ultimately he's going to write what he wants um, because it's, it's his film. 
Um, but I, I do hope that you know he definitely looks over those notes from John Josh and Hayden because this is just this is just a weird thing to be happening at the same time. I know, I know, and uh, I think that's another thing is fans, or at least what I've gotten from everyone in the discussions here is that people sense that this is potentially a cash grab. Like the only reason this movie is happening is because Cobra Kai is so successful and um, they're trying to get something out to coincide with it. Um, but at the same time, the bizarre decision was made not to involve John, Josh and Hayden, you know, who, who are responsible, you know, in large part for the success of Cobra Kai and um, why not include them? And, you know, what's going on here? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Um, but, you know, I guess, I guess they have their hands full anyway with Cobra Kai, and uh, I guess we'll just give give these new new production team this new production team uh, benefit benefit of the doubt. I, I think there's that, and anybody that follows Ralph, anyone that's uh, listened to him narrate his memoirs, or if you read his memoirs, he's talked about the you know decades of turning down reprising Daniel LaRusso for you know all these reasons, and. I I would hope that you know if he picked up this role, it's something that he says, "Hey, I like this idea. I'm, let's let's do it." You know, just because like anything else could have been a simple cash grab as well. So I think you know Ralph said yes to Cobra Kai because he le believed in the project, and um, you know having Daniel Russo in whatever capacity was something that he was okay with you know that this wasn't going to mm -hmm. tarnish the legacy of daniel russo or whatever because you know who knows if ralph wants to you know um, continue making returns to the big screen i don't i don't remember him having said that uh you know in the last panel i intended um in in any other previous interviews so i could be wrong in that and maybe this is something like you know baby steps to trying to make a, a you know return to the big screen as well um mm -hmm. so th there are things that you know uh that, that's why like i don't make you know videos like this because i think there's just a lot of factors and moving parts uh and it's really hard to kind of guess where anything's going in such a early stage in, in any production yep that's a great great advice um of course we know this production is going to be it's going to be set in brooklyn so it's going to the east coast so I'll use that to segue to another East Coast character that people are speculating about, and that is Julie Pierce appearing in Cobra Kai season six. And you had mentioned before that it's not something that you're clamoring for, but you recognize the fan interest in having her uh, appear. Can you uh, explain a little bit more about your feelings regarding uh, Julie Pierce and the Cobra Kai series? Absolutely. Um, you know, you, even to... Uh... Let's just say that she's in there for um, you know a, a good amount of season six. I, I think there's a lot of students, both boys and girls, that could use uh, you know her experience from you know what we've seen her go through in the next credit kid. And we don't know what she's been up to. We, we didn't know what Chosen was up to uh, and until we got the glimpse of him in season three. And that's why when people had asked me if Chosen, if I thought Chosen would return, I thought it made no sense. And then not only did they bring him back, they brought him back in like the most badass way. Because when I, I'm going to be honest here, when I saw season three Chosen, I loved it. But I was thinking, that's not my Chosen, right? Like uh, when, when you, to Ken, when you first saw Terry Silver in 401, <laughs> right? Those first few minutes. Yes. Right? And, and, yeah. you, and you knew this wasn't who we're going to get. Right. But just those <laughs> first few minutes, like, would you, you know, if, if he never went, if we never had the beatdown on Stingray later in the season, you know, uh -huh. if we just got Tofu Terry, right? Right. Would, would you have been okay with that? Right. I, I, yes. Uh, no, I, like, <laughs> I, I think, well, he, here's what I'd say. When we first saw him, I have to say, I loved it. Like when he's playing the piano, like you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But then, no, no, no. Yeah. Then he becomes to tofu Terry and, uh, and you're right. I think, I think that kind of threw a lot of fans for a loop. Uh, and if he had stayed tofu Terry forever, you're right. I, I no, I don't think I'd be satisfied. You, no. you would, you would still be watching them and you're like, well, I like this, but that's worse yeah. than. Where's the Karate Kid three? You know Terry Silver, right? Like right. Thomas Ian Griffith would have done an amazing job, and I guess it Absolutely. could have been interesting. Like yeah. he's turned over a new leaf. Maybe he's a good guy. He's a mentor. He's gotten past his issues. Could be interesting, but man, yeah, where's that Terry we love from Karate right. Kid three? 
And so I'm watching season four or season three chosen and, and he's, you know, got this long, uh, uh, you know, con of, of like, you know, he's been wanting to kind of get Daniel in this moment. And then when that happens, I'm like, well, okay, okay. All right. You know, he's, he's, you know, wised up, he's silly. He's, you know, he's a warmer character and Hey, he, he, he learned and he matured. He grew, he, you know, he grew up. And so when 502 happens and, you know, apologies to Sensei Silver and, you know, the, his uh, you know, potential recruits, I was like, there it is that's what i wanted you know i was like yeah yes you know give me that and so with julie pierce we haven't seen her make any sort of appearance and again it could be small it could be something small as uh, as ali kumago has uh, had a small uh, moment as well but i know that yeah there's going to be it would be some f- fan service you know if you if you bring her back but if they did it they would make it impactful right like mm-hmm. i know a lot of people were underwhelmed with the um you know, how many uh, sequences Mike Barnes was a part of, you know, but it was impactful, you know, it, it, and it served a purpose. And so, but, but there's other things that we may not know that, you know, why it was only Sean available for this. Well, he has, you know, he has his soap operas as well. And so he's, that's a busy guy. And, right. and we see him popping up all over the West, uh, Midwest and w- wherever, you know, for, for his uh, uh, stand-up comedy as well and, and other things and signings. So he's, he's busy. And so if, you know, Hillary is, uh, is busy and they want her and she's okay with it, they can find something small. Um, but if I, I never expected Chosen to show up in every episode of season five, and that's a possibility too. And they can always write it that way. But I think that's just going to be something, at least for me, as somebody who is a diehard Miyagi-Do fan, um, just that little setup in episode 502, the mention, you know, and a lot of people have been interpreting it different ways. Um, The way I interpreted it was that we're, you know, kind of laying some groundwork for the, you know, possible return of Julie Pierce one day. And right. as, as a fan, as for myself, that's just one thread I would love to see closed because just the the whole what if, you know, for like however long I may wait for like the next anything Miyagi verse related. Uh, so me selfishly, I just want that part wrapped up. Um, the mention of Terry Silver in season one, you know, like if if you, yes. we didn't get young uh, Twig, you know, in yeah. season three once they were introduced maybe not once they were introduced but i think you know as you're watching season three you're like they're they're working you know towards the return of this character you know yeah. and so because they haven't been doing that for a julie pierce i i would just feel you know some some type of way not having that wrapped up and like oh man what what could have been you know just just to see that because they mentioned it so early on so uh, so i do come with it more of a selfish point but i'm I would just be excited to see that world connect, you know, not so much this other new film. We could put a bookmark on that and I can watch that later. But right now we're still working on Cobra Kai. And right now we still have a legacy character that has not yet been introduced. Right. Okay. So I have some thoughts that I want to bounce off of you uh, regarding Julie Pierce and Hillary Swank. Uh, and if you guys have been watching my streams lately, I, I'll have floated these ideas before, but i I want to ask Peter because he's kind of an expert here. Um, Hillary Swank as an actress, she's a double Academy Award winning actress. I mean, she is huge, huge star. Um, You know, she is headlined movies. Obviously, Ordinary Angels was a new one that she was just in. She's headlined TV series. Um, She's huge. And uh, people are expecting her to appear in Cobra Kai season six. My thought is this. If Hillary Swank is going to make an appearance in Cobra Kai season six, I don't think it would be a very quick cameo because she is of a certain stature that, as you're saying, it would have to be impactful and you'd want to give her quality scenes, quality part if she's going to come back. I don't think she would necessarily be interested in just popping in and saying hello, you know, and then being somewhat inconsequential to the main story of the season. Uh, The second thing is... I would think given her stature as such a great actress, she is not probably offered a lot of roles nowadays where she gets to kick ass. And I would think that 
giving her a quality part, an impactful part, and the opportunity to kick ass in this series might be alluring. And then I'll follow this up with one final thought, and I want to get your thought, get your comments on this. She is a big star. She does she does headline series. In fact, she's headlined Netflix series before. I have to believe there are conversations if they're talking with Hillary Swank about her not only appearing in Cobra Kai season six, but also headlining her own Miyagi verse series hmm. where she is the star. I mean, that of of anyone in the Miyagi verse, uh, she is she'd be known to fans, but also she's a superstar. And she's the kind of person you could base an entire TV series around. Uh, and uh, I, I just want to get kind of get your th thoughts upon that. I love it. You know, I, I would love to have a lot of different spinoffs from different people. Um, I would love some prequel stuff. I would love Young Miyagi, Young Chosen. Um, I would love, you know, a post Cobra Kai uh, Julie Pierce. I think that would be great if, if um, maybe they introduce her in a small way and then continue on afterwards in her own show. Um, you know, and so it, it's kind of, you know, uh, I, I think a lot of people are also kind of thinking it, you know, like if it's a small role and even if it doesn't lead to like a spinoff, you know, would she accept something kind of small? I think with Cobra Kai, it would be something unique that, um, and I don't want to speak for her, but just like, you know, from from a stranger admiring from afar, I'm thinking like this this particular project is unique because it had, you know, it, it has the spirit of Mr. Miyagi and her herself worked with Pat Morita. And so I feel this would be like a project that has an asterisk on it. If, you know, if they reached out, you know, I would love to be a part of that world because she knows what that would mean to many of the fans, you know, that that do also love uh, the next Karate Kid and Julie Pierce and Mr. Miyagi's movie. Um, so um, I, I think that's that's one where she might be okay with, even with her her stature, you know. Um, yeah. And I did see something. I don't know how long ago this was, and I don't remember the movie. But I was trying to cut, you know, like a fake uh, like uh, introduction of Julie Pierce into the Cobra Kai world, you know, fan trailer. So that's that's on my Instagram account. If you guys want to check that out. I, I don't remember if I shared it on X, but it's definitely on the Instagram. And I did find uh, some footage of her kicking butt with some other young woman in, 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 a, in a kitchen. And they're, it's bloody and it's violent. And there was some dark comedy in the scene. Uh, so it, hopefully that's enough clues for you guys to find that. But, um, you know, you know, can mm -hmm. do a million dollar baby. So you're right. It's been mm -hmm. a while. And so I, I, I do wonder if she kind of missed you know, kind of hitting the gym bag and, and things like that. And maybe this is just that one project that, hey, I'll do an episode, you know, a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a tribute to Mr. Miyagi or something like that. That might, might be kind of fun. So, but again, I, I wouldn't oppose to a whole spinoff and maybe we'll get Michael Ironside in there, you know, show up at the end of season one oh. <laughs> with oh, his beret. <laughs> He comes comes in and goes. The real story is only begun. Yeah. Now, now they were yeah, with her um, for, with him for some reason. <laughs> <Still. right>. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I I love that Peter. Thank you so much. Um, I love your thoughts on all of that. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll have to see what happens with Hillary Swank. We've got a super chat uh, from John NASA Kane's fan. Thank you so much, John. That's very generous. Um, he says Dutch at the wedding. Now, Peter, we've covered in the last several weeks here, we've talked about how Chad McQueen's Instagram page once had a post where his daughter had said that, uh, you know, thanked everyone, all the fans, but that he would not be appearing in the Cobra Kai series going forward. However, at some point in the recent past, that post has been deleted, does not exist on Chad McQueen's Instagram account anymore. So, um, that has us speculating, why would someone go to the trouble of finding a specific Instagram post and deleting it? None of us do that, really, unless it's, you know, we have a breakup or something. Um, you know, people just don't go and delete their Instagram posts. So there's been speculation that, hey, we might be able to see Dutch. So John here is wondering, if there's the wedding between Johnny and Carmen, would Dutch show up? Would he be there? Could he get out of prison? and be there. And so my question to you is, how plausible do you think this is? 
And is it something that you would want to see? Or if you're going to see Dutch, do you want to see him kick ass? Um, I haven't put a lot of thought into this, but you know, this is something I've uh, spoken with Watch Party, and I know he put a video out as well. Um, yeah, but so so I've spoken to people about it. I haven't really given a whole lot of thoughts. Um, I can see something like you know, if we have a wedding sequence, and that's that's something that you know I've been saying for a while myself as well. Like if we get a wedding sequence, I would love to just kind of have them flash around all all the you know faces of familiar you know characters. Um, kind of like, you know, Tony Stark's send off in Endgame, um, something similar to the finale of Orange is the New Black, one of my personal favorite shows. And they showed us some from previous seasons and, you know, like we're ending the show. This is where this character is. And and we feel good about that. And so um, I think uh, if, if the show ends at a, one of the you know penultimate episode or the one before that, I, that it would be nice to see Kumugo show up and finally, mm. you know, meet Johnny and uh, have Dutch do one last shimmy, you know, uh, because he just had his first beer out of like prison or something, you know, mm. uh, because it's a warm one. Who knows? You know, the the the, the, the possibilities are endless if you know John Josh Hayden could get Chad McQueen to return. That yeah. you know, it's they love that character probably just as much as uh, they do Terry Silver. So, um, yeah. you know, heck, you know, what if he's just there for the birth of the baby? <laughs> That's something special. I know. Uncle Dutch. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uncle exactly. <laughs> I, I will, I will say though, like if you're, if Dutch is going to come back, I would love to like the idea of him being a, like a prison hardened Dutch released and unleashed on the world. Um, man. That would just be amazing, but I, you're right. I'll take Dutch in any way possible. If he, if Chad McQueen wants to come back, I know we've pleaded over the years. Please change your mind. Please come back. Um, and so, so that's at, that would be absolutely incredible. It, and it of course, be, Peter, I was just gonna say it could be something small because this guy is no no uh, stranger to prison. And you know, if they're in a pickle, you know, and maybe Dutch had been released because you know good behavior. It's like I know someone that can get us out real quick because he probably just hasn't even quite adapted back to the the real civilian world, you know. And right. so, you know, he might be one of those guys like in uh, uh, like Shawshank Redemption. It's like I can't adapt out here, so if I don't go back, I'll just die, kind of thing, you know. So it right. the again possibilities are endless. I, I I think I think you got your new uh, uh, next topic here. Just how could Dutch be used uh, if he shows right. Up? Yeah, I know. That's it's another it's another great thing. And uh you know, I've been having this theory that uh the the finale of Cobra Kai uh, will feature a double wedding in Okinawa with uh Johnny and Carmen and Chosen and Kumiko. And uh I don't know. What do you think of that? Is that is that idea just kind of too hokey? Um you know, it, it, in fact, I even la you know, I talked with Cobra Kai Wisdom uh Mike about the idea of even having uh uh, BD Wong come back as boy in the street, but he's actually the wedding planner for their double wedding. Kind of like a, a reference back to father of the bride. I was about to um, say that. I was like, cause yeah, yeah. Father the bride? <laughs> oh, but like, if you're going to get the boy on the street back into it, I don't know. But, um, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Is that too hokey for a series like Cobra Kai? Um, if we get BD Wong, like I, 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 we need to have Steve Martin, you know, and Martin short who are both <laughs> doing murder in a building or, you know, whatever the name is. Right. Another show that I need to watch, but, uh, I too hokey. No, not too. I, but I think that would be too much to to end uh, a show with because there's so many things that they need to do already. A double wedding isn't like out of the question, but um, I think because the show started off as Cobra Kai, Johnny's Cobra Kai, I think I think it should end with just Johnny's wedding. You know, his own wedding. Um, despite mm -hmm. any of the other characters, I would actually prefer to not know exactly what happens with Chosen and Kumago. Uh, we oh. know where Chosen, uh, where he, where where his heart is. We know that that he is uh, in love with Kumago. We don't know the know that yet, and we may know in season six. But I don't want that to kind of become a thing that now we kind of draw focus away from like the main plot. 
the returns of, you know, Terry Silver and Julie Pierce, you know, we don't want to take away from that. Um, So I think like some of these smaller things that I would kind of categorize a little bit more on the fan service side. um, I I would say let's just not prioritize that and kind of put that lower on the totem pole. Um, I just love the idea of him, you know, in love with Kumiko because like, well, of course, you know, that's why Trouble kept on finding Daniel LaRusso. You know, it's not right. chosen was into Daniel LaRusso. He was into Kubico, you know, so. Right. Um, and so I, I, I just love that sequence. And um, and I don't think I need the Tamin Tamita to to show as Kumiko unless, you know, she wants to come to the wedding, you know, and, and meet Johnny as well as to reunite with her uh, friends, um, Chosen and Daniel. Right. Yeah, that's a great point. I love that. Um, we, we have some. Great comments. Jaws says Julie Pierce at the choosing choosing Kumiko wedding. Um, I I agree with you though, Peter. Like you know, maybe that's some, and Morgan says something similar. Kumiko and Chosen haven't even dated yet. We can't just skip to the wedding. Right. So it's like that's that's a bit it's a bit much. Um, and then Lupo says Crease and Miyagi's ghosts at the wedding, <laughs> just like Anakin, Obi Wan, and Yoda to the Jedi. Oh, don't okay, don't so Tommy. Kreese, Oh yeah. Oh dear, Tommy. Yeah, you're right. Uh I, I like how you snuck in Crease there, Lupo. You think Crease <laughs> is gonna die, huh? <laughs> He's gonna die. He's not gonna be just a guest. Um let's see. Jaws says Marinella had a theory Dutch knew Terry in the 80s. It's kind of an interesting idea. Uh I don't know. Like uh, it, it seemed like to me, you know, looking back at uh, and that's a great comment from Obana, I hi- highly doubt. Silver will be going to jail. He's too rich. Odds are he'll plead insanity and end up in the hospital. Of course, us Terry Silver experts kind of understand Terry's past with the law and how he basically owns everything. So, yeah, you might be right about that, Robana. But um, as far as Dutch knowing Terry, it did seem like Terry was kind of at arm's distance from the dojo. Like, that was kind of Crease's thing. Like he knew of Johnny, but Johnny didn't know him. So I would think it would be the same relationship with Dutch. Like Terry, at least back in the eighties, probably didn't get too involved in the kids and the students. Uh, he might have known of Dutch, but um, Dutch may not have known of him. I don't it, know. What you what, know what, what do you think? Yeah, Ken, just to add my two cents to that. I mean, you can even make it make sense with uh, Dutch's demeanor in the opening of the uh, credit kit two in the parking lot. Why was he kind of mm. checked out? Why was he, you know, hat down, turned, turned away? Maybe yep. he's just like, you know, I don't see this. Um, and I, I know about this Terry Silver gentleman and, uh, you know, if things go south, I'll just roll this side, you know? Oh, I like that. I like that because that has been a puzzling reaction. I think to a lot of fans is, uh, his friend is getting attacked by John Kreese. And, you know, you've got uh, Tommy and Bobby that are very upset and trying to like, I mean, he's suffocating Johnny, but, but Dutch just turns around. He turns his back to Johnny. Yeah. You know, that's like the second place trophy, you know, that's (laughs) right. (laughs) It's just, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Well, guys, this has been an amazing discussion. Peter, thank you so much for coming on. Do you have any kind of final words of wisdom kind of inspired by our discussion going into this very special year 2024 40 years after the original and we have looking like releases of both cobra kai season six and a new karate kid movie do you have any thoughts for fans as we head into 2024 you know there's a a lot of content out there and not just necessarily content from content creators i know a lot of us spend uh, time on our phones and so we're uh, you know often on social media there's no reason that you can't spend you know um an hour or two hours catching up on cobra kai there's 50 episodes you can go back and rewatch. uh you have friends and family that you probably haven't spoken with uh that hasn't watched cobra kai that you can introduce them to i you know went down to texas for my sister's wedding just last week and i had a stepsister who uh, i've never met that's 35 and she has heard about cobra kai and i told her about what i did and i never really pressured her but one day we were just finding ourselves like in the living room on the phone with just something on the tv as background noise i was like hey do you want to check out that show and she's like sure and next thing i know we're on episode six she's like next one Mm -hmm. next one um Mm -hmm. 
her six-year-old daughter who was watching with us uh, she kept on glancing over at any time johnny you know dropped an expletive and uh it, and at one point she paused netflix ran to the restroom came back and unpaused. she she didn't want to miss anything from cobra kai so it still wow. speaks to a lot of different people who who don't know it so we know how social media can be taxing and exhausting and and toxic spend some time with your loved ones friends or family and see if you can get some new people to watch cobra kai and experience mm -hmm. their journey you know because that was really awesome for me to do and i i tried very hard to bite my tongue and stop saying like i i interviewed him and and her and and that you know it, it dropping right. the little trivia about like oh watch when the homeless lady picks up the pizza she was actually picking up some of these things herself um so there's a lot of, of so there's new fans to be have and and to meet uh so so maybe maybe try doing that there's um the movies you can go back to the first the one and three are uh, uh celebrating anniversaries this year so let's go back and revisit those if you haven't some time and even right. friends who don't want to watch cobra kai hey have you seen the original karate kid they got this new one coming out let's let's go watch the new one uh and also because of the 40th reach out to some of your local um you know smaller theaters and see if you can request a screening of the karate kid and make an event out mm. of that you know try to find some time and 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 do something for yourself and um and you know just spend less time on social media uh uh because i i, I know I, I i have a pretty decent pulse on it i have taken a huge step back in terms of my presence but I am still very much there reading everyone's comments and seeing all the fighting. And, um, yeah. you know, I have my family that, that I come home to and, and I want to be in a good and positive mood anytime I'm away from my phone and spending with them. And, and I think spending a little less time on social media, uh, can help. So I just kind of wanted yeah. to give my two cents on that as a, uh, someone who kind of pretends to be like the father of the fandom. <laughs> <laughs> watch party call me something like that you know like, like yeah the dad of the fandom because i'm just i don't know I, I guess i have expectations of like uh you know people as content creators and what i i thought like our responsibilities or whatever that is but everyone has their own interpretations and um at the end of the day they'll do what they want and so i've come to to understand that and accept that better um you know some of this self-help and maturing thing Took me a while, but uh, I've, uh, I think a lot of people have humbled me along the way. So, very good. That words of wisdom, Peter. Thank you so much for for joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing all your new content on the Companion Network. Everyone, you can check that out. There's a link in the description. Uh, amazing content on every aspect of Cobra Kai, Karate Kid. Um, absolutely fantastic. Go ahead and follow his channel. Subscribe, uh, and if you enjoyed this today, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit the thumbs up, like, and then notification bell so you don't miss anything going forward. It's going to be a very exciting year. It'll and uh, Peter, yeah. what's that? It'll yeah, make yeah you it'll make good. you feel good. <laughs> You're right. It'll make you, make you feel good. Peter, this is amazing. Um, and we have to get you back uh, for, for more, if you're willing. Uh, this is a big year. The Absolutely. 35th anniversary of Karate Kid 3 and other huge live streams I'm sure we can have this year too. If you're willing. No, one hundred percent. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you continue to reach out. I, pre I sure of appreciate course. it. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's great. And if you didn't see this past week, I, I want to thank Peter again. He gave me the, one of the best birthday presents I've ever gotten. Uh, he, in, he introduced me to Thomas Ian Griffith at Paley Fest, and uh, that, that. So thank you, Peter. That, that was a lot of fun to revisit that. And I think Mary posted that. It was thank you, Mary. That, that was yeah. a great memory. Yeah. It, it was it's great or coming up on two years but um and you know thank you for everything you did for me uh that day and then some uh after so absolutely shout out to uh dave srock and amber who both uh really enjoyed that as well so oh, yeah. uh go to the companion network and watch the coverage of paley fest it's still amazing to watch uh peter interview everyone on the red carpet and uh, we can't wait to see what's in store for this year. So everyone, thanks for joining us. If you're a channel member finalist and above, we have a members only stream coming up uh, pretty soon. I'll see you then and we can continue talking. And Peter, thanks for joining. And we look forward to seeing you next time on KenCast. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye. Want to be part of the live KenCast show? 
subscribe to the Ken Cole YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get alerts about every new show. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time on KenCast.